Hi everyone! As you're probably aware, War Thunder has three game modes, Arcade, Realistic and Simulator. We have talked about the first two throughout our previous videos. Now, it is time to cover the most mysterious and difficult of all game modes, which can be accessed via Events and Tournaments section of the game. All in all, simulated battles are not that different from realistic battles. The flight physics is almost identical too, but your trusty instructor that allowed you to fly almost anything in realistic mode is turned off for this one. So now, you will have to actually control the entirety of your aircraft yourself. Yes, the controls become more sophisticated, but they give you way more freedom to perform. Now, you will be truly able to do some hardcore maneuvers. Only in simulated battles you can pull off aerobatic stunts how they are done by actual pilots in the air. Another major difference here is that you only have cockpit view available. If any plane does not feature a 3D cockpit, then you will be forced to use the first-person view of that plane, for the time being at least. Bomber pilots, as always, will be able to switch to their gunner view if required. There are no markers above your enemies in here either. You want to shoot down a plane? Well, use your eyes and spot your target in the skies around you. You want to take out a ground target? You'll need to memorize its location from the map and then navigate to it on your own. The ally markers are visible only from 900 meters and less. Let's move to the practical side of things. Some people believe that you absolutely gotta have a flight stick to play simulator mode. This is not true at all. If you only have a mouse and keyboard, we have a special control mode in place called mouse joystick. In this mode, the game simulates the flight stick via mouse movements. To be fair, the actual flight stick is much better suited for simulator mode, because a flight stick is a more intuitive way to control your aircraft to begin with. You pull the stick towards yourself and the plane starts climbing. Should you move the stick to the side, your plane will follow. Many novice players that are more familiar with a mouse might find using a stick more difficult, especially when it comes to firing. In other words, a mouse is better suited for firing, while a stick is better for serious stunts. But piloting skills alone do not a pilot make. In order to truly succeed in aerial battle, you must constantly monitor your surroundings. This is where the mouse begins to lose to a stick. Most flight sticks come with a mini thumbstick that can be used to move your camera around. Most mice don't have this feature. You will have to hold down C key to move your camera with your mouse, which prevents you from controlling aircraft while you look around. But some pilots manage to set up their camera control through their keyboard, so you can try that too if you don't have a flight stick. Well, to be honest, nothing comes close to Oculus Rift or Trek IR when it comes to controlling your view, because both of these devices allow you to look around by simply moving your head. You can also find headsets with similar yet simplified feature. The bottom line is, you can play with a mouse in simulator mode, but it is much better to do so with a flight stick. From this point on, we're going to be using a flight stick for this demonstration. If you have just switched to a flight stick from your mouse, you might feel some discomfort. For smoother controls, you can increase the value called nonlinearity at required axis, such as roll and pitch. You can also decrease sensitivity. The dead zone prevents a sensitive stick from making an unwanted movement caused by a pilot's shaky hand. The game also features control presets for many various flight sticks available on the market, which can be accessed through Control Wizard. Whatever you do, don't forget to switch to full controls first. Now, let's head out to the runway. OK, we are in the cockpit. Let's assume that your aircraft and view controls are set up to your satisfaction. First, look around the dashboard to get a sense of your camera. Now, start the engine. The default key for engine start is I. Don't punch the accelerator too hard. Start out by slowly building throttle. You might notice that your aircraft might be drawn to a side and slightly down at the same time. This is happening because of your propeller's torque. You can compensate for that with your rudder by steering in a direction opposite to where your craft is drawn during takeoff. Now, build up your throttle, get some speed, extend your flaps, and your plane should take off on its own. Just keep the stick pulled slightly towards yourself. Don't ever do it if you don't want to spin back down into hard earth. After you are safely in the air, you can retract your landing gear and flaps. Voila! You are flying! Be careful when landing, too. When landing, you need to repeat all the steps done during takeoff, but in an opposite order. First, lose some speed, then extend your landing gear and flaps and descend slowly, always keeping your nose slightly up until you make a soft touchdown. Once on the ground, don't forget to use your brake and steer your plane to avoid a nose over. That's it, you have just cleared your takeoff and landing lesson. 
Now, let's talk about the flight itself. Remember the torque that pulled your aircraft during takeoff? This effect can also steer your aircraft off course in mid-air, which is evident if your aircraft is rolling to a side slightly. This effect can be overcome with the so-called trimmers. The trimmers are aerodynamic surfaces designed to compensate for that torque. We recommend you set up your elevator and rudder trimmers as soon as possible. These will help you better control your aircraft in flight. Be aware, not all planes have trimmers and, even if they are present, they might be only available on certain surfaces of the plane. Take your time and familiarize yourself with your plane's trimmers first. To set up trimmers, please access the full aerodynamics tab and assign your trimmers for your own comfort. We recommend your turn on relative controls to be able to change values and percentages. If you don't want to do all that, you can just set up the key called trimmers fixation. Then, by pressing it in mid-air, you manually steer your plane to go straight as possible. Then, hit that key and the game will do the rest. Now your plane will fly straight. Just remember that fixing your trimmers in certain speed and altitude will make your plane behave differently at a different speed and altitude. So, if you want to use this simpler method, you will have to manually fix your trimmers every time you change your course. The trimmers can also be used during takeoff, as long as you keep in mind how and why you fix your trimmers not to overdo it. Okay, here we are, in battle. I can't stress this enough, but keep an eye out at all times. Your enemy might come suddenly, and more often than not he will. Remember that a pro pilot always keeps his head on the swivel, unlike a novice. Watch your six and don't let yourself be caught unawares. Okay now, what's this? Target spotted! No marker at this range means this is an enemy. Get closer and fire. Target destroyed. The shooting itself is not hugely different from realistic battles, but in simulator you are unlikely to fire from a couple of kilometers away like it's sometimes done in RB. Most firefights in simulator mode occur at ranges of a couple hundred meters. You should take your time and aim well, so not to give away your position before you can strike a deadly blow. We recommend anyone new to simulator mode to avoid using stealth ammo belts until you get a sense of firing without any markers on the screen. So, should you jump into the deadly fray of simulator battles? Well, this depends on physical qualities of any individual pilot. That should be similar to real-life pilots, well, maybe minus the resistance to G-overloads. Try out your first couple of games with bots to get a feel for controls and make sense of your cockpit view camera. Always look around and remember that in real-life aerial combat, the key to survival is to see the enemy before he sees you. You would also be wise to avoid any major brawls that are so common to other two game modes. If you have a friend experienced in simulator mode, talk him into flying together with you being his wingman. Most importantly, do not be afraid of the simulator mode. It can look intimidating at first, but experience here builds much faster than it might seem. Only here you will be able to experience a new sense of flight and true realism of aerial combat. Good luck and see you soon.